going on another solo cross-country road trip uh, from Florida to California. And I've done this multiple times, so I am very familiar with it. I love it. People think I'm crazy, but I actually really enjoy this drive. Uh, the main reason why I do it every year, or actually twice a year, is because um, I want to take my dog with me to visit Candy, my sister, for the holidays. Um, yes, Kuma could probably fit on the plane underneath the seat, but she is a little bit long, so it could be uncomfortable for her. I haven't tried it, um, but I feel like I'll be more stressed out taking her on the plane than um, taking her on the road. Like I'm very stress-free when it comes to road trips and taking her, whereas if I were to fly and do it, especially during the holidays taking her, I think I'd just be way too stressed. So I opt to drive <laughs> multiple days instead of flying. And like I said, I like doing these cross-country road trips. It's very therapeutic for me, and I like looking at the views. Uh, the first half of the drive is kind of boring, but uh, the second half, it gets really pretty, and uh, I like looking at the mountainous views, and like the hills of Texas are really pretty. So since I've done a lot of these videos where I'm showing you where I'm going on the cross-country road trip, um, it's usually the same route, but this time I decided to cut out a day. So usually I take five days to go from Florida to California, averaging about eight hours a day driving. But this time I thought I would go for four days. And so I'll cut out one day, uh, averaging about 10 and a half hours a day with the last day um, being about six and a half hours. So on this road trip, I am starting in Tampa, Florida then moving on to Lafayette, Louisiana, then to Fort Stockton, Texas, then Phoenix, Arizona, and finally Los Angeles, California. So in Lafayette, I'm staying at the Drury Inn. I actually stayed here last year with Candy and it was a great hotel. I actually really love Drury Inn hotels. They're very pet friendly, they're family friendly, and they offer a lot <laughs> for a great price. So all Drury Inn hotels, you get free breakfast and free dinner. And their dinner selection is actually pretty good. It really helped us out on one of our trips when we were in Flagstaff, we stayed at a Drury Inn, and they provided dinner there, of course. So we were like really tired and didn't want to look for any restaurants uh, and go out anywhere. So it was nice to be able to have dinner at the hotel, super convenient, and it was pretty good as, you know, filling. They also, on top of that, give you three complimentary drinks a night. So it ranges from wine to beer and some cocktails. And then in Fort Stockton, I'm staying at a La Quinta Inn. I've stayed here before as well, and it's a really nice La Quinta Inn. They just opened a couple of years ago. Uh, everything is clean, very modern. Yeah, everything was great. It was quiet, nice beds, good staff. And Fort Stockton is a good mid-stop in Texas. It's really hard to find that midpoint in Texas because Texas is so long. And from like the last big city like San Antonio to the next big city, which is El Paso, is like hours and hours. So to break that up, uh, Fort Stockton is usually the place to stop for me. I stopped at um, Van Horn before, which is a little bit past Fort Stockton. I didn't really like that town. So I always choose Fort Stockton over that. Uh, they have better hotels and more selection when it comes to some fast food. And restaurants, again, they don't have, you know, as much as a regular city, but enough and it's more comfortable. And then in Phoenix, I'm actually staying with a friend. I have several friends in Phoenix, so I have a lot of options, luckily, to stay with friends who also accept my dog, too. So that's really nice of them. And then finally, I move on to Pasadena. So a lot of you have asked uh, what kind of car I drive, and I always forget to mention it, so this time I'm not gonna forget. I drive a 2018 Ford Escape, and I absolutely love this car. It's super comfortable, it drives smoothly. If you need to pass cars, it'll speed up pretty quickly. Um, good brakes, um, it's compact, so easy to drive. And um, my last car was actually a Ford Escape too because I liked it so much and I'm pretty sure my next car will also be a Ford Escape. 
because yeah, I think it's really reliable. I also get asked how much gas costs on this entire trip and I calculated it on my first cross country road trip and I believe it was about 200 to $250 uh, going from Tampa, Florida to Los Angeles, California. A full tank of gas for me is usually around $30 as the average. So this road trip, uh, gas prices are pretty fair. I think it's back to about $3 as the average price. California is always more expensive, so I think it's like $5 there or something. I don't know, something ridiculous. It'll probably be about the same amount on this road trip, but I'm going to aim to calculate how much it is for the entire trip. And as far as the gas stations that I like, I usually go to Pilot or Loves, and then if there's a Bucky's, like, like in Texas, I love Bucky's. And in Florida, I always prefer Busy Bees. Uh, Busy Bees and Bucky's are like mega super gas stations. And I usually tend to go to the bigger gas stations because they have more gas pumps, so you're not waiting. Also more restrooms, cleaner restrooms, and they usually have a dog relief area too. And then in California, I think Valero's is a good one. Arizona, there's also QT, which I think was pretty good. So yeah, so we'll see how I do on this four day cross country road trip. I've got about two hours left on this drive. I'm in Louisiana now. Um, in total, I've made five stops today. Three of those times I filled up on gas. The last time, uh, which was just about 30 minutes ago, um, I still had more than half a tank left, but just decided to fill up anyway so that tomorrow I'll be starting almost with a full tank. But yeah, the drive hasn't been that bad. Um, in the beginning, this morning in Florida, there was a storm passing through and there were some tornado watches. So I was a little bit concerned when I was looking at the forecast, but it wasn't that bad at all. I only hit certain patches of it and it went away. And now for like the rest of the drive, it's been nice, clear and sunny. Uh, and it's like 60 to 65 degrees and it feels wonderful out. Okay, so, so far on gas, I've Spent, so the first place was $31, second place $33.50, and then $14.25 for the last. Um, and that was filling up about, I don't know, five gallons or so. And I was surprised at how cheap the gas was there. It was This was in Mississippi. It was $2.55 per gallon. I haven't seen it that low in a while, so I was pretty happy about that. Um, all the rest of the prices were around three dollars so that's that's gonna be the average I think but yeah so the stops that I made today in Florida I made three stops first at exit 283 at busy bees like I said before I love this gas station they have super clean bathrooms lots of gas pumps so it's a really smooth stop and then along the way I had to use the bathroom again because I drink coffee and lots of water I want to stay hydrated so I stopped at a rest area, um, exit, it was after exit 166. I actually don't really like this rest area. It's nice, but it's not right off the interstate. You actually have to go down like these curvy roads for about a mile before you hit the rest area. Again, it's nice, um, but I just wish it was right off the interstate instead of having to drive further out. But it wasn't like I was in a hurry today, so it wasn't a huge problem. I just had to stop here at the rest area because I had to go really bad, and um, that just happened to be the next stop. And then I stopped by exit 26, uh, filled up on more gas, and 
then got into Alabama. I stopped by Bucky's. Um, again, since I'm drinking lots of coffee and water, I have to use the bathroom constantly. Or it's probably like every two to three hours is when I when I stop. Um, and it's good too because you know Kuma comes out with me. I take her out for a quick walk. So yeah, if you're looking for a Bucky's that's not in Texas, Alabama has one at Exit 49. It's really nice and clean. Again, lots of pumps, restrooms. So a great stop. And then finally uh, in Mississippi, I stopped at exit 28 at Love's and that was the one that had really cheap gas at $2.55. So, so yeah, so now I'm in Louisiana and um, about two hours away, I'll get there about 3.30. I left this morning at five, uh, so I'm making pretty good time. Oh, I did wanna note one thing. So if you're driving through uh, Alabama and Mississippi uh, or Georgia those three states uh, always have speed traps I've heard this for years and years and um, it's really true because just in like Alabama and Mississippi I saw four to five speed traps that's a lot because you're only passing through a little portion of those states so to pass by that many speed traps is kind of crazy <laughs> So last night, uh, after I made it to the hotel, um, got all my stuff, all my luggage up to the room, I actually had some random guy uh, ask me to dinner or drinks, but I was so tired. I was kind of out of it actually by the time I got there. The drive was completely fine, but it was like once I was stopped and done, I it's like all my energy just left out of my body. So. I was kind of um, just out of it. I was also only thinking about Whataburger because there was a Whataburger right down the road from the hotel. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna get Whataburger, relax, watch some TV, take a shower, and then go to bed. Just went to Whataburger. I actually filled up on gas too because I was, I had a little over a half a tank left. So I just decided to top it off so that the next morning I could just start fresh and not have to fill up. So that was uh, $15 to fill up. So I've been driving about four to five hours now and I'm doing okay. I'm just a bit tired today more than yesterday because I felt like I didn't really get great sleep. Um, but I always feel like this happens to me on road trips uh, where the second day I don't sleep too well or the first night I don't sleep too well. Keeping myself up with a lot of podcasts. I downloaded a whole bunch or saved a whole bunch before I started the drive. Actually, the ones that really keep me uh, engaged on this drive it are the um, reviews on, or summaries on the animes that I'm watching. So I'm watching a, a few, actually a lot of anime right now. One of the new shows right now, um, of course, is Bleach. And then Chainsaw Man is another one that I didn't expect to like, but I'm really amazed by it. And also I'm into Spy Family, which is another new one. And I also got Candy and her husband hooked on it too. So anyway, I like to listen to podcasts that review each episode because it kind of engages my mind to think about the episode again and kind of reminisce with the, um, the reviewers. Like, oh yeah, that's what happened. Or oh, that's what, how they think. Yeah, it's good to find podcasts that help you keep, you know, keep you engaged on the drive.
station in Fort Stockton in 20 more minutes, we'll be arriving. Um, at first I thought I still had like an hour and a half left, but I must have put in directions to somewhere else, because then I realized, wait, I think Fort Stockton is coming up soon. Uh, so then I double checked and sure enough, I only had like 20 minutes left instead of an hour and a half. So that's great news. But yeah, I only stopped twice this time. And the first stop, um, I filled up the gas, it was 20 bucks, and the second time it was $34. So I stopped at Bucky's at exit 791, and then at Valero's at exit 465. So yeah, this drive wasn't bad at all. I love, love this part of Texas, so it is the my favorite part of the drive. I just love the vast landscape and the hills in the background. The sky is always really pretty here. Out of like this whole cross country drive, this part of the drive is my favorite. I love the western part of Texas. And I don't think it's appreciated enough. driving let's see for about four hours I think um, I left at close to 5 a.m. woke up super early again at 3 a.m. but this time I went to sleep last night really early at 6 30 p.m. which is ridiculous but I was so tired by the time I got to the hotel so got some gas um, at this crappy gas pump that wouldn't fill up all the way so I only filled in about $10 and then got something to eat at this great Mexican place and then took a shower and then I was just so drained and went straight to bed. <laughs> so that was at 6.30. So I did get about, you know, seven to eight hours of sleep, which I needed. So I made a stop at the gas station and filled up in uh, Van Horn, Texas. And it was 24 degrees there. I couldn't believe how cold it was. Actually right now it's, I'm in New Mexico now, but it's 30 degrees. I didn't think it would get this cold already. But yeah, so today I'm heading to Phoenix and I'm getting there a lot earlier than I expected. I was telling my friend before when I was planning out this trip that I'll probably be there around five, but it's more like I'm going to be there around two because coming from Texas, I gained an hour. So I'm hoping I won't be too tired by the time I get to Phoenix because I am planning on going out and meeting up with some friends uh, at this place called the Pemberton where they have uh, lots of, I guess, eateries. So in Van Horn, Texas, it was the gas price actually jumped up a bit to $3.39. Might be because uh, it's in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> but um, and it's still under, you know, 350, so it's good. But yeah, it was that was the most expensive, I think, throughout this whole trip. I had about a quarter tank left, and that was about $38 to fill up. I think I'll make one more gas station stop, maybe two, because I still have about 350 miles left to go.
It is my final day of driving, the fourth day from Phoenix to Los Angeles, and I'm a bit tired today <laughs> because I did go out last night. So once I got into Phoenix, um, I stayed at my friend's house and took a little nap, power nap, and then went out around 5.30. Then <laughs> drink a little too much, um, had my favorite margaritas and uh, stayed out till about I think like 10.30 is when I got home. Um, but yeah, I got a little tipsy, so I'm paying for it this morning. I do have a little bit of a hangover, but it's not terrible, so I can still drive. But it was fun last night to hang out with all my friends. They're all so great, so nice, and thanks to my friend Miracle again for all her hospitality. Like, her place is so great. I love staying there. Today's drive is the shortest. Uh, it's uh, five and a half hours. With traffic, it might be a little bit more, but it's a Sunday today, so I'm hoping there's not too much um, traffic. All right, so as far as gas, um, I'm probably gonna fill up one more time before hitting California. I do wanna fill up in Arizona before crossing the border to California because gas in California is always more expensive. But to calculate, the first day, filled up four times and that equaled about a hundred dollars and the second day filled up three times for about sixty five dollars then third day it's about ninety five dollars on the third day and then uh, today I'll probably fill up one more time so it'll be probably like thirty five dollars is my best guess and as far as hotels, uh, I stayed two nights. The third night I stayed at my friend's house. So Jurian was $140, that was in Louisiana. And then the pet fee was $35. So if you have a pet, you have to pay a little bit extra. The next day was Fort Stockton in Texas. I stayed at the La Quinta Inn and it was $130 plus a $20 pet fee. Or actually it was $25 for the pet fee. Those prices are actually pretty good. Uh, Phoenix, you might pay a little bit more. Also on road trips, I always use this app called iExit app because it tells you what exits are coming up on your drive on the interstate. And it's actually a live view too. So as you're driving on the interstate, it already picks up where you're at and it'll uh, count down the mileage for like the next exit and then it moves on to the next one. And I love this app because it tells me how much longer I have until the next service station. So, you know, sometimes in your road trip, there's like long breaks where you don't have a rest area or any service stations. So this tells me like, okay, in about 40 miles, there's a rest area or, you know, in about 20 miles, I can fill up gas. And then once you click on the exit, you can get even more information. And it tells you, it lists out all the gas stations and, like restaurants, fast food places. So it's super, super useful. I highly recommend downloading the app before you go on the road trip. So yeah, I think that's about it for this video. I hope it helped you out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna watch more road trip videos, I have a whole playlist of different road trips that I've done since uh, 2020. And uh, if you want to subscribe to our channel, please do. We post weekly and would love for you to follow us along.